Welcome back, folks. So today I'm going to have another look at this uh, UNI-T UT210E. Um, we had a very brief look at this uh, back a, a couple of months ago. Um, but uh, on that video, which I'll, I'll link to up here, I had one commenter, um, by a guy by the name of Andreas Spies. Uh, Andreas has a, a channel where he does a lot of stuff using uh, microcontrollers and sensors and such. Uh, you got to go check that out. I'll leave a link to that down there as well. Uh, one of the problems that we were having um, was that uh, in the DC current reading through the, the clamp, uh, for very low currents, it wasn't reading accurately at all. In fact, if you had the, the if you had the thing around the wrong way like this, it was actually reading zero. Um, and generally speaking, it's supposed to be a little bit more accurate if the positive side is on this side, negative side is on that side. But it, you know, it really doesn't make a heck of a lot of difference. It says it's actually more accurate this way, the wrong way, um, than it is the right way around. But that doesn't matter. Like these are not supposed to be all that accurate. They're supposed to give you a, a ballpark reading. The AC measurements would be more accurate, but DC is, is uh, I mean, this is good that you're going to get for an instrument like this. Um, but like I say, you know, like it, right now we have uh, 1.537 uh, amps going through it, and it's reading 1.534. So it's, it's, it's pretty good. Um, we can't really complain about that. Now the problem comes when the current goes down. So we're gonna let's let's reduce the current going in here, and we'll bring it all the way down here. So we got 45 milliamps going through it right now, and you can see it's just dropped off to nothing. Uh, the wrong way around, and the supposed right way around, it's reading twice what it should. So. Uh, Either way, like the low current range on this thing, it gets very inaccurate when you're meeting, reading small currents. Uh, what Andreas suggested is a great idea. Um, it's something I'm actually surprised I didn't think of myself. Uh, <laughs> having a background in physics, I should have. But uh, what he suggested was, was loop the wire through it a number of times. And that will uh, increase the apparent current that's going through it. It'll read higher, but then you just divide by the number of turns of wire that's going through it, and that should give you a better result. But at least it raises up the apparent current to a point where the meter will read it more accurately. So let's try that out. Let's see how, how that works. So we've got this wire here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put several loops through. So we've got, we got one there, add another one, two, three, four. And this will make it five. So we put the clamp on it now. We'll put it on the right way. The right way. And uh, we're reading uh, 295. So if we take that 295, 295, and we divide by five, we're now getting 59, which is a heck of a lot closer to the 45 milliamps than we were getting before. Um, so it, it does get you to the ballpark uh, and far more accurate reading. Let's try it the, the wrong way around, see how that comes out. So now we've got 192, 192 divided by 5 equals 38. So you're a little bit low on this way and a little bit high the other way, but still you're far better off than reading 90 milliamps or zero milliamps. So this is a great hint. Thank you, Andreas. I appreciate you uh, leaving the comment and uh, providing us all with this uh, neat idea. Anyway, that's it for today, folks. Um, thank you very much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.